Previously, in Chapter 2, I met a super hot dragon boy named Ace, and we have made a lifetime contract. Sounds a bit cringy, but I like Ace more than my own mother. Who knows that a gorgeous, angel-like woman would plan to end her three-year-old daughter's life? Damn, that witch. Next month is my fourth birthday, so all of the servants are busy working. My father got me a tutor to teach me basic and unnecessary knowledge. Gosh, worse than hell school. Focus! This is still a couple of maths exercises. Still? I'd rather die than do maths. Magic is worse than maths, dear. Losing focus for just a blink of an eye, your magic will rip your eyes out. Okay, I started to fear of having magic right now. You are looking at my tutor, Cynthia. She looks and acts like the average girl in my past life. She has average brown hair. She uses glasses too, which is pretty average. Even her smarts are average. But it seems that her true talent lies in her earth magic. Knights, mages, and adventurers are ranked by their skill level on something called the Talent Scale. The Talent Scale ranks adventurers from A rank to Z rank. The weakest people are A rank, while godlike people are Z rank. Cynthia is Q rank, so she can be called a half-godly mage. Yikes. I've only been teaching you about fractions for a little bit, and yet you have already understood it perfectly. You're really a good. It's too easy. I'm so bored. I'm sorry, but it is my job to give you homework, even if you finish it so quickly. All right then, teach me about the land. All right, it's a little early, but I think you will be fine. Yay. Okay. You already know that the country we are in is called Silverbell. We are the only human country. There are seven countries in this world. Silverbell, Alfheim, uh, Aquaria, Dwarnia, Oakwood, Macrog, and Redleaf. What's the difference between them? Silverbell is a kingdom of humans. Alfheim is a country of elves and fairy. Aquaria is the kingdom of the sea, where mermaids, mermen, and other sea creatures reside. Dwarnia is a country of dwarfs. Um, can you slow down a bit? No, shut up. Um, is she really my tutor? Ugh, fine. My lady, I'm so sorry for interrupting your lesson. Excuse the servant, but we need to pick out a dress for your debut. My maid, Sophie, came running into the room I was in and picked me up from my chair. Oh, no! Save me, Cynthia! Cynthia had a look of pity on her face, but she just shook her head. Gosh, this woman. All right, Cordelia. It's time to get you the prettiest dress we can find. There were sparkles in Sophie's eyes as she grabbed a huge pile of dresses. Oh, well, there is no escaping now. After what seemed like months, I was finally able to pick the perfect dress. Are you sure that you want something so simple? It's your big day, so you can pick the prettiest and fanciest clothes you want? Nope, it's fine. I don't want to wear anything too fancy. Excuse the servant, my lady. Your mother requests for your presence. Another maid came through the door. My mother did? Yes. That's strange. She has requested for me before, but she rarely does this. As far as I know, my mother hates me due to jealousy, but I can't decline the offer. If I declined, I would be treated more coldly. All right, I will go. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome, my lady. Please follow me. I nodded to Ace, who was waiting outside the door while I was changing. He followed me as I walked. We walked around the confusing walls of my home for a while until we stood in front of a door. Is this where my mother is? Yes, your mother is waiting on the other side. As I stared at the door, I took a deep breath and turned the handle. Ace flew in first to check the surroundings.
She was nearly perfect in every way, but her personality was trash. But even though I dislike her, I can't fully hate her because I know she will die of sickness in the future. The prophecy said that. I thought this before, but my mother was beautiful. Her skin was as white and clear as porcelain. Her eyes sparkled in the light. Her lilac hair looked like spider's threads as they swayed in a breeze. Good evening, sweetie. It's been a while and your mother has missed you so much. It's such a shame, isn't it? My mother spoke in her sickeningly high voice with a fake smile plastered onto her face. Yeah, Mommy, I miss you so much too. I was so happy when you called for me. How sweet. Your mother has been waiting for the perfect chance to meet you too. How was your day? It was great, but it was also kind of boring. Miss Cynthia's lessons are always thorough, but they are too easy for me. Miss Cynthia says that I am a genius. Really? Your mother is so proud of you. But you must be tired if you study that much. Would you care to join your mother for some tea? Sure. I drank my tea after checking for poison, of course. I wouldn't be so stupid as to trust my mother's drink. I looked up at my mother and saw a twisted dark grin on her face. <laughs> I turned to see Ace's shocked expression. That was the last thing I saw before the whole world went black. Clara. Clara. Ugly, wake up. Wait, Clara is my past life's name, and the only person who calls me ugly is... I quickly opened my eyes and saw two gods in front of me. Shay and Gaudia, it's been so long since I saw you two! Welcome back to the gods' world, Clara. Did you have fun? Yeah, this world is so much fun! <laughs> There would be no reason to send you here if you didn't die from that old hag's poison. Seriously, you need to learn some caution. Wait, I died? How in the world could I have been poisoned? This is why you are an idiot. You may be smart, but you don't have good instincts. Being near that woman is equivalent to death. Your tea and teacup weren't poisoned. You never learned what Amelia's magic power was, right? Her magic is space magic. So while you were drinking your tea, your mother teleported some poison directly into your cup. Things like this could have been avoided if you had a big enough brain to bring a guard with you. They have magic nullification amulets. Also, her magic only affects things 10 feet away from her, so you could have lived if you didn't come close to the lady. Come on, chill dude. She's just new to this world. She's literally been there for three years. So what happened to my mother after she poisoned me? Nothing. Because the stupid investigators couldn't find any evidence against your mother, your mother was declared innocent. Your dragon died after you did, too. I felt my stomach drop and my throat turn dry. I was a little dizzy. My mother, Amelia, didn't only kill me, but she killed Ace, too. Clara, it's going to be okay. Gadia and I have decided to give you a choice. Lucky for you, two benevolent gods decided to let you choose if you would rather come back to life or if you would like to go back in time. If you choose to come back to life, we will make it so that it seems that you miraculously survived the poison. But, there will be some setbacks. Most likely you will become mute and disabled. We can't heal your body to its original form if you come back to life. However, if you choose to go back in time, we will send you back to the moments before Amelia poisoned you. You will have another chance. But if you happen to die again, we can't bring you back to life or send you back in time again. Because you are probably too stupid to understand, I'll make it simple for you. If you die, you permanently die. So basically, I can choose to guarantee my life with setbacks or to risk my life with no setbacks. As I was thinking, the face of my mother, Amelia, came into my head and I burned with hatred. I would do anything to have my revenge, even if I had to end my own mother's life. One more chance. I will survive. All right, send me back. But for real live this time, okay? I don't want to see you die again until you are old. May you find happiness and accomplish your goals, Clara. I'll miss you. We, we give, give you, you our blessing. blessing. 
Shai and Gadia said together. Then, I disappeared. Do you think Clara can save this world? Maybe, or maybe not. I stared at the door before me. Beyond this door was Amelia. When I walk in, don't follow me. Go to my father. Speak to my father in English. Ask for some guards. Say that Amelia will poison me. Don't tell him that I told you this. Immediately return. Then... I explained everything to Ace and what he should do. I'll be okay. Just do everything as fast as you can. I said quietly. Ace nodded and flew off. I opened the door, leaving it slightly open, and saw my mother sitting in the same position I had seen her in before. Before, I thought that she was beautiful. Now, I thought that she looked like a crazy witch who wanted to try to kill her own daughter. Five, four, three, two, one. Now! I brought the teacup to my lips carefully. I could see Amelia's grin as brought the cup to my lips. She flicked her hands, activating her magic. The poison was definitely in my body now. As she was doing so, Ace activated some of his magic and bound her limbs together. We heard the door slam open and looked to see my father sweating in a rush. He immediately gestured to some healers to remove the poison from my body. They efficiently did their job, and I could physically see a dark substance leave my body. They placed it into a cup. Amelia was shocked. She didn't even imagine that my father would come running through the door at this exact moment. Halt, woman. You shall not move or the guards will arrest you immediately. Daddy! It's okay now, sweetie. It will all be okay. What? What's going on? Honey, shouldn't you be busy with your paperwork right now? After a bit, he stood up and glared at Amelia. Amelia couldn't do anything but sweat in fear. She was too far away from the cup to remove the poison. My father picked up the cup from the healers and handed it to one of the inspectors who came in with him. They examined it and finally declared that there was indeed poison in the cup. Amelia was arrested immediately. A week later, word had gotten around that Amelia had died in her jail cell. I, of course, felt no sadness at the loss of my mother. My father didn't care about her death either. We lived happily while she was gone. Another week passed, and it was time for my fourth birthday debut. 